Saul, you are one of the best BJJ fighters of all time. And I fair, you have a very long career and accomplished a lot already in your career, very successful. So what motivates you to keep, you know, improving and overcoming and getting better? The daily grind. I think that everybody asks me, hey, Saul, when are you going to fight next? I say, you kidding me? Since I wake up, clock goes 5.30, I say, oh, 5.35, 5.40, let me 10 minutes more. It's already started. It's, uh, it's a mental struggle that you don't know if you are going in the right direction. And everybody that live by result is going to be way more stressful than us. I enjoy the process. I'm a big believer that if you don't like to train, if you don't like to get physical, if you don't enjoy the soreness, if you don't enjoy really be miserable, you should not be here competing. And it's the same in the other activities that I do. I want to be the best. I just want to be recognized and I want to bring everybody with me that loves what I do and be successful. And what's the definition of being successful? Be happy doing, you know. I see so many people put so much pressure. Oh, I have to, I have to. No. You do what you feel, that you are in the right direction, and see where, where it lands you. Say, people say, oh, you accomplished six. But what about somebody coming and accomplish eight, 10, 12? That is no limit. Limits in your head. Just keep doing, keep pushing. And I love, I love when somebody say, oh, you can't do this, that's when I want even more. And that's my personality, comes from my mom, and uh, that's motivating me every day. And they say, when are you gonna stop compete? When I die. Saul, you have a brother that's also a world-class Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu fighter, very successful. Um, how is you growing up with him, training, and how does he help you on your training? My brother lives with me since he was 17, and uh, it's the best thing that happened in my life. He has everything that I don't. Our personality is complete opposite. I like the night, he likes the day. I like to talk a lot, he's very quiet, reserved. He's pretty, I'm the intense, I got with a lot of attitude. And we alternate seats all the time. Sometimes I'm the teacher, he's the student. Sometimes he's the teacher, I'm the student. I'm the father, he's the son, the brother, he's the older brother. And it's just amazing, amazing. I'm a big believer that you cannot impose another man what to do, what you think. And he's the same way. And uh, I love it when he corrects me because it means that he has the opening. I give him the space to be the best of him with me. And when we get on the mat, it's on. It's my greatest competitor that I have to face twice a week. So he pushes you. <laughs> oh, we, and uh, you know, we look at our communication nowadays is a non-verbal communication. I look to him and I say, today, I say, yeah. We already know, we go to the end. Our last training session was my birthday, was almost an hour and a half. And we go to the end. I don't believe that two human beings can go that physical and that hard and have so much love for each other like me and Sean you go. And uh, we're skillful, we train every day, so it's it's magical. It's something that when I live there, I'm just, I just become better as a human being. And as a fighter, not even a scratch on you. And it's, it's a blast of God. And where do you see this sport going next? And what do you expect from it? And what you still want to accomplish? It's like I said, would you imagine yourself doing interviews? People all over the world, oh, who is the car? Oh, this and that. It's, it's the global globalization of things. We gotta go live stream, we gotta go TV. That's the only way we're gonna let the old formula have a cabin, seminar, sell shirts, sell this to make a living. It's time for people to really see that we make a difference in people's life. We really, we really help people how to live. Uh, being a nutrition, being making friends, being facing adversity. Jiu-Jitsu is the whole pack. And it's the, I tell everybody, it's the last expensive medicine, therapy, workout you're ever gonna have in your life. And uh, when I was young, I didn't understand 
the, the magnitude of that. And now that I realize and we are in a country that is all about healthy jiu-jitsu fitting, but there's one thing about jiu-jitsu. You can't lie to the others, you can't lie to yourself. You just got to embrace and accept because it's going to be sometimes painful. But the reward, it's forever. That's why we say jiu-jitsu, you embrace the lifestyle. Because it's everything that you surround with. And uh, I couldn't be in a better place. Awesome. Do you dream to see jiu-jitsu in the Olympics one day? I think that I dream first that we understand each other here. <laughs> And in the, all the capitals of Brazil, of the world, everybody's entitled themselves to ownership of Jiu-Jitsu. Hey, nobody owns Jiu-Jitsu. Let's do projects together. And let's gonna be surrounded of good people with good intention that don't want the things tomorrow, that want to create something. Because what are you gonna do for yourself? Gonna die with you. What are we gonna do for the sport? will last a lifetime and uh, we see these programs for kids. Everybody point their finger, oh, this guy are doing this, bulletproof, this guy are doing this, but do something. Don't point the finger how you can help, what you can do to benefit. We still look like we are in the 80s in the surf industry where everybody, I was yesterday carrying all the, all the bags, hey, let's put, them to put the booth because we got to go through the face. But, 10 years from now, I know exactly how to do everything and I can be a better CEO. I can be a better guy to point the direction we gotta be in because criticism won't take us nowhere and create a zillion federations even worse. So Olympic dream is something that is very utopic right now. We should look inside ourselves and say, how can I contribute for Jiu Jitsu today instead of uh, throw rocks and just being the big negativity that is surrounds just that guy that guy make that much money good for him he earned it why are you not making money what's your problem what are you not doing right instead of uh, you know i see a lot of negativity surround jiu jitsu and i think that's one of the biggest problems that we have when everybody start to give their hand and say hey let's do this oh you are Grace Barra. You are Ribeiro, but let's gonna do a project together because in the end of the day, what we fight for? Jiu-Jitsu. And what you expect tomorrow? Tomorrow? Yeah, that you're competing. I expect... You have, you, have any, you have any techniques, any surprise that you're planning, anything different? Different. Saul is very simple. Fight straightforward, relentless, with all the heart, with all the passion for the sport, with a very pure technique. I train every day because I love. And my mission here is to inspire the others. I want to lead by example. I have 250 reasons to be here and be example for this new generation. All my directors are here. For me, it's a big celebration. And everybody say, oh, this is a party, I say. Maybe for you, when I get my double gold, then becomes my part. Until there, I gotta take care of business and I wanna really set a high stand for the longevity of the jiu-jitsu. Because uh, when I was 20, I said, man, a guy four years old, he's old. But jiu-jitsu made me young. And I'm fed by young energy every day. So I, I know that I'm gonna fight. I'm gonna be here for too long. And tomorrow, even who don't like it, gotta watch. <laughs> Congratulations. I know everybody, you inspire a lot of people. Everybody's looking to, to see you fight and keep, you know, continue your career. That's amazing. Thank you. <laughs> and Mama did a great job. This girl here, the best. Thank you. Thank you.